The impressive building behind me is the Science and Engineering Centre. Inside is the Cube. The Cube represents a, a globally significant audiovisual and IT project. It's really a vision statement for QUT. It's about big data, it's about research, it's about visualisation, it's about our future students. Science, technology, engineering and maths is a very important area for Australia and internationally. We need more people in those areas and uh, to get the engineers or the scientists or the science teachers for the future, we need them to see that science is actually engaging and fun and, uh, and that they can see a future in it. How the Cube came about is a pretty simple story. We were investing a lot of money in a new science and engineering precinct. We had a major public space on the ground floor. We were interested in reaching out to the community, both the general audience as well as the school community. And we thought, well, let's do something here. So the Cube allows the STEM high school engagement team to interact with high school students and teachers in the wider community in a really interactive and vibrant way. It also allows us to make university much more accessible. The Cube sits right in the middle of our learning and teaching space. So all around this installation are undergraduate students doing their day-to-day -day study. And as they go about their study, people are coming in and uh, interacting with the Cube. It's more than just a set of great technologies that have been integrated well. It's about a vision that says it's great to study science, engineering and mathematics. It allows students to come and experience real world science issues and engage with the data in a real way. QUT has a number of groups that have worked very closely to develop the Cube. They have depth in their own fields and they work very closely to solving real-world problems. And they use that practice, uh, basically building a team environment, to um, deliver separate stages of the project at the right time. Uh, so there's a diverse range of skills within the Cube Studio. Uh, we've got three programmers working up there. And they all come from games industry experience. And then we've got our interactive designer, Simon. So he's really the vision holder for all of our projects. He makes sure that we're building things right for the user. And he also comes up with cool and neat ways of us building content to go up on the wall. So he's always thinking about what we can do to make our products great. So you take the, the school profile of the teams. You know, we have visual effects experts on scene. So they've done television, they've done film, and they apply all of those techniques and that, that scrutiny to the quality of the work, to, to the Cube content. Uh, and now there's agencies all over the world that do stunning content, but it's the uniqueness of the environment of the Cube and, and systems like it that require a, a whole other complement of skill sets as well. So it's not only applying great visual effects to something, you also have to make it sing across multiple computers and, and, and quite sophisticated infrastructure. Uh, skills are very important here and skills uh, don't just include those hard skills such as training and, uh, and specific uh, technical skills but also the skill to work together and collaborate to understand that you can uh, have a vision uh, and you can drive towards that vision collaboratively. Gavin and the team came to us with, a, with a really quite a detailed brief and said this is what we want to achieve and we really just looked at the technology aspects of it and said, yep, well, here's how we can do that bit. They said, great, and off they went. Q2 
QUT has developed and led the way, especially in Australia, on developing these disciplines and, and honing that expertise and retaining that expertise. And that was accomplished through our own ability to integrate manufacturers, vendors, academic experts, as well as professional practitioners inside the university. Uh, and to my knowledge, to, to this date, that's not been replicated or uh, reflected by other institutions or organisations. Usually through uh, our Vice-Chancellor or, or other senior university leaders, they bring VIPs to the CUBE. It's, it's such an inspiring space. First of all, it, they're awestruck, but then I love what they're seeing. And then the next thought process is, how would I use this? And then the next thought process is, well, how do I get one? As part of a role I had with the OECD, I had the opportunity to meet Angul Guria, the Secretary General of the OECD, in Paris early in 2014. And I found out that he was coming to Brisbane for the G20, so of course we invited him to come and have a look at the Cube. And so he became aware of what we're doing at QUT, as have many other international leaders, uh, and that's very good positioning for us, but it actually most importantly shows the commitment we have and the confidence we have in investing in the STEM space, whether it be in the teaching and learning arena or whether it be to support our research activities. Installations like the Cube bring real research problems into public focus. It allows the community to actually see what the issues are and they can actually then make informed decisions. Um, it's much easier to look at a large visualisation of an issue than to try and wade your way through a research paper. I would think that QUT have the experience and some very, very talented people to take those concepts, both in terms of the actual content and the uh, infrastructure, and deliver them anywhere in the world. QUT is a leader in this particular area, and if it's inspirational, high-impact experiences that you're looking to develop and produce as an installation or as a combination of visualisation, concept development, content development, uh, and scenario planning, uh, QUT is the place to come to. QUT, with that knowledge in-house now, we can really offer an external party a wealth of information, not just for hardware, but how do you engage with the public, how do you build content, and how do you make it relevant for now. But what we do intend to do is to keep exploring and keep developing, so over the time it, it will change and that change may involve different ways of interacting. For instance, um, at the moment we touch the screens, but in future we may interact through other devices that sense us being there. The Cube has already proven itself and will continue to evolve. It's supporting our research, it's supporting our learning and teaching. Um, the opportunities to visualise so much of our research in particular are quite exciting and I think that everyone is energised about the possibilities ahead.